everybody. Brad Pointer here. How are you doing, America? Especially, but everybody in the world. How are you doing after this election? It's the Friday after the election, and we, you know, nobody has nuked us yet, so I guess we're doing okay there. Um, nobody, I mean, there's crazy things happening all over the, the states right now. On, you know, we've got Clinton supporters or, you know, at least anti-Trump people. They say Clinton supporters. Probably not. They just don't want Trump. Uh, got those people dragging people out of cars and beating them. Then we got people spray painting swastikas and talking about white power on churches and stuff and we got uh, people spray painting on walls that you know you something about you know black people your lives don't matter and neither do your votes um, you know I mean we got uh, just all kinds of people supposedly being sexually assaulted and you know I mean and by Trump people because that's just I mean it, it's scary this this campaign this really hate filled campaign that we've had has <clears throat> really really emboldened all the all the fringe people, you know? All these really nasty groups, you know, the KKK and you know, we got I heard of a lady that was walking through Walmart and got her hijab ripped off by some woman and thrown on the ground and well the hijab was and said you know, you're not allowed to wear that anymore. You know, go Trump. America? Where where are we? Where, where did America go? I mean, do we not remember Schoolhouse Rock? The great American melting pot. The great American melting pot. You know, I mean, here's something I want you guys to think about with the hijabs, okay, with the little heads, I don't know how to say a hijab, I don't know hijab, I'm, you know, I'm not trying to be culturally insensitive, I just don't know shit, but here's what I want you guys to think, okay? If a woman is from a country and was raised, okay, I mean, think about this. So they're raised from the time that they're small to cover their bodies. Like American women are raised to cover their chest and regions. These women are raised to treat their whole bodies like that, okay? They're raised... And to them, that's okay. You know, that's the way that the, it's always been for them. That's the way they were raised. So, consider this, women of America. When you tell someone they can't wear their, their head covering, it's like... If you went to another country and someone said, oh, I'm sorry, you can't wear a bra or a blouse, okay? And you, you're like, no, Brad, it's a whole different thing. Those are my boobs, you know? You can't, you can't compare that. No, it's the same mindset has been put in their head, okay? The same thing that, you know, that boobs are sexual to, 
to to American people and to you know most of the world, really, you know, because they're movies. Well, uh, but it's the same thing because their whole body to them is that way, you know. And those, I mean, I don't know if there's a degree of you know, oh my goodness, you know, I mean. It might be as easy to get a, a Muslim woman to show you her hair as it would be for you, for you to show her her boobs. I don't know. You know, I mean, shoot, they might be easier. You know, they might walk in naked with a head thing. I don't know. I don't know where the emphasis is in their, in their culture. But I do know that that's the way they're raised. They're raised to not expose themselves, you know, and yeah, those little baby girls running around, you know, in diapers, <coughs> just like there is in America, but once they get to a certain age, that stuff stops, you know, it's like when girls get to a certain age in America, they have to start wearing shirts, you know, and that's usually probably, what, three, four years old, two, I don't know, at home even, you know what I'm saying, I mean, at home, there's little two-year-old girls running around in diapers, and that's it, and that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But I'm, and I'm sure that it's the same way in their culture. So when you, it, it, it's just like if you went to a country where everyone was topless, and they said, and someone came up to you and ripped your shirt off and said, you know, you can't wear that anymore. You know. Vote for Frank Zappa. Yeah, you know. <laughs> Woo Frank Zappa. Because Frank Zappa won the election over there. I, I know he's dead. No, don't get me started on that. But I just wanted to wanted you to think about that for a second. Their, their whole body has the same kind of old, you know, don't let anybody see it just like your nipples do okay I mean think about that if your body was covered with nipples wouldn't you wear a headscarf but but anyway that's that's what something that I wanted to say you've got to you got to think about these things people you got to think about it from someone else's perspective okay and you've got to kind of get an idea and you got to try okay that's all this is I may be completely wrong and I've stated it as fact because in my brain it makes sense okay that's what the big deal is and people are like what's the big deal and you know just take it off you know it'd be like telling these Christian ladies Imagine telling a Christian lady that she couldn't wear a shirt or a bra. She had to let her boobs hang out. You know, imagine telling that to your uptight Christian grandma. You know? I mean, we gotta think about these things, people. We gotta we gotta put go back and, and look at look at their environment and where they're raised and realize that that is their normal and compare their normal to our normal, okay? That is how, that is how we, we gain some empathy and we gain some understanding of one another, okay? They all think, oh my God, you know, these women are walking around in their panties and bra, essentially, at the beach. You know, that's the norm for us. That's not the norm for them. They think that that's trashy. I mean, they're like, oh my God. They might as well just sleep with everybody, you know? So, so you know, you got to think about things, folks. You got to kind of put things in the, in the, in, in the perspective. Nobody wants to, wants to think about how anybody else thinks anymore. Nobody wants to, to take the time to actually understand what it feels like to be in somebody else's shoes, you know? 
nobody does that anymore. I mean, that, well, very few. I mean, it just seems that way. It seems like nobody does that anymore. Just because of the the division that we have in this country, you know. I mean, I understand wanting President Trump in the office. I, I do, you know. And they were saying that most of the people voting for both candidates did it holding their nose. You know, yeah, he's terrible, and but she's worse. And yeah, she's terrible, but he's worse. And I, I can see, you know, you're tired. We're all tired. I'm, shoot, you think I'm not tired of, of government politics and bull crap and giving more money to the rich people? You know, trickle down economics, you know, it's not trickle down economics, it's somebody peeing on you, you know, unless you're into that kind of thing, you know, then that's not cool, because that's essentially what we're, what we're getting, we're getting the table scraps from, from the so-called elites, you know, and these are just people like us, they need better than us. You know, they ain't even better than the poor people. Some of them just had, you know, opportunity handed to them from the time that they were born. Others have worked very hard and to rip off as many people as they can and rip off their employees and hoard money like nobody's business. So they've worked very hard to do that, though. They're the self-made men who have made themselves rich by exploiting their either their customers, their employees, or usually both. And I'm tired of it. I'm tired of those kind of policies being put in place. I'm tired of seeing bills that were written by corporations not even looked at by legislators just run through you know hey let's vote on this what is it I don't know but this guy donated 10 million dollars to my super PAC so whatever it is I'm going to push it so I can see I can see you know why I can see why Trump is now president, or the president-elect. I can see it. They don't like it. I can see it. All I can do, <clears throat> we all know he's a con artist. So let's hope that the con was on all of his voters. And he was saying all that kind of crazy crap. Just just so that they had voted him into office and now that he's in office let's hope that he actually tries to get in there and clean house like he says he's going to you know that's all we can really do at this point you know there's if if the democrats had pulled their heads out several months ago back in the spring and put their support behind Mr. Bernie Sanders who was loved by Democrats who was loved by the young people who was <laughs> I think the only people that didn't like Bernie Sanders were the people who wanted to go for Hillary Clinton that's all I'm gonna say. He's respected by the his opponents in the in the in the Senate. He's 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 a well respected politician. And the thing is, he's not the normal politician. He's been there a long time because, you know, bless their hearts, I think, isn't it Vermont? Yeah, bless their hearts, you know, they those people, they've got good taste. That's all I'm going to say, because they could have put that, we could have put that man up there. And if Hillary's 
and heard the Democratic National Convention, Debbie Wasserman Schultz or whatever, you know, whoever that, you know, when you can look back and say, hey, this person really screwed up. And that's that's what happened here. That's what happened. We had in on the Democratic National Convention those folks in there they they wanted Hillary so bad. And it was the establishment. It was it was the you know, corporate people. They want they kept Bernie from going. It was a, it was the people the 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 people that were making the donations to the Democratic, whatever, to that stupid, pe to those stupid people. The rich people paying the stupid people to keep the nice people from beating the corrupt people. That's what it was. And we'd be sitting in a different America today if that hadn't happened. But nope, now we've got riots. Well, we've got protests. And whenever you have protests, there's potential to be a riot. Because apparently we've forgotten that peaceful protest is, is an American thing. Everybody's like, why are, you know, crybabies and everything else. Protest is part of the American whatever. It, protest has always been. It's that free speech. The right to assembly. You can get together and be mad as long as you don't be violent and break stuff. Then that is your right as an American guaranteed under the Constitution. So don't tell me that these people are crybabies or whiners. They're terrified. They're scared. Because they've been essentially told by the president-elect throughout his campaign that they, that they have targets on their back. And it's proving to be true. And the video of the white guy getting drug out of his car. You know, what did he say? What was he emboldened to say? That's what I want to know. Because they wouldn't have known that he had voted for Trump. They may have suspected it because he's a white guy. But they wouldn't have known for sure unless he had said, Hey, I voted for Trump, so now you guys got to get off the street. Trump's going to clean you up. That's what I figured, you know. He he went over and started talking some smack, you know, because he's emboldened by Mr. Trump and the win. He's emboldened. He goes up, or he rolls down his window, and he says, Hey, you blankety-blanks, get off of the sidewalk. Go get a job. Trump's going to run y'all off. One of them said, you vote for Trump? He said, dang right I did. Brr. This is the way I, I see it playing out. Because, you know, they didn't, nobody's drug me out of my car. You know, that's all I'm saying. You know, and no matter what people think, generally, People don't just go dragging you out of the car unless they're going to carjack you. But no, this is personal. This guy got drug out of the car and got beat. That's right. He got beat. Which isn't right. But I'm sure his big mouth got him into it. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this little stupid video. If you liked it, which you shouldn't like it, don't like it, don't do it, it's a trap. And I'll catch y'all on the spatula side. Peace.